Hello, everybody. Now, I hope you are ready and excited to start trivia. Just to let you know, as you can uh, tell, if you look at the time, we are running a little bit over time, I'm afraid. We just had so many brilliant questions from all of you that we wanted our pitches to answer. So I really hope you can stick around. It won't be long now. Trivia, and then you get to find out who our winners are. So question one is, what native animals, native Australian animals, are in this picture? You have to agree with me. It is a very, very cute picture. So I don't know how many of you will have had the opportunity to see these guys uh, in the wild, but they are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, if you've seen any of our advertising for uh, this event, you will have seen these gorgeous animals. So I'm hoping that everybody has got their answers in already. Remember, the quickest, the quickest correct answer gets you the most points and your chance to win one of our prizes. So let's see how everybody is going with the first question. Remember, there are eight questions. Let's have a look. Oh, I'm waiting to see. I know that soon we're going to get to see how people voted and I'm excited to see how you went. How many of us have seen these Gorgeous animals. I'm told we've got 20 seconds, 20 seconds to get your vote in if you haven't already. Let's have a look. So your choices were sugar gliders, antichinus, and honey possums. We've got a few, few uh, heart emojis there. I'm guessing that's because everyone agrees. These are absolutely gorgeous. Okay, I hope your answer is in. The time is up. Let's see. So we had the most votes for antichinus, but these are in fact little honey possums, gorgeous honey possums that uh, if you're really lucky, sometime you might get to see in Western Australia. I saw some feeding on Banksia and they were gorgeous. All right, but all is not lost if you didn't get the correct answer. Let's move on to question two. Tricky one. Playing a high-pitched tone of about 500 hertz will. What will happen if you play a high-pitched tone? Now, I reckon we all might be able to think about which talk this one relates to. A potentially quite annoying high-pitched tone. Makes me think of camping and when you're in your tent and you're all comfy in your sleeping bag uh, and all you can hear is a mosquito in the tent with you and you know that unless you find it and get rid of it, you are not going to have a very fun night. <laughs> That's my experience of mosquitoes. So let's see how we go. Playing a high-pitched tone of about 500 hertz will anyone's having trouble with the quiz just go to the chat the link is there you should be able to follow the instructions to register your vote let's see how everybody went with this one 500 hertz it's very very high pitched let's see how long we've got to go 12 seconds get your vote in We've got lots of people responding to this one. Bit of laughter, a bit of shock, lots of likes. Your time is up. Let's see what's going to happen. We have very, very good correct answers here. What's going to happen is that you're going to attract male mosquitoes but have no effect on female mosquitoes. Everyone was clearly paying attention during Perrin's pitch. All right, let's go on to question three. Question three is approximately how many urchins are living on barrens in Port Phillip Bay? I reckon you can probably remember who talked to us about urchin barrens. And we had lots of questions asking why it is that urchins are so successful and end up in such high numbers. I guess not having any otters in Port Phillip Bay means we haven't got any otters feeding on them. So can anyone remember approximately how many urchins are there in Port Phillip Bay? And I reckon you can probably remember what Fletcher's plan is. 
about what we might be able to do with some of these urchins. And we have it on good authority from Fletcher that some lemon juice makes it very tasty and perhaps also kiwi. So you've got about 25 seconds left to get your answers in. Is it 8 million? Is it 80 million or 800 million? I mean, really, all of those are pretty uh, enormous numbers, really, if we think about individual sea urchins out there. So let us see. Countdown, three, two, one. Your time is up. So we had a very good uh, retention here from all of you. Many of you remember that it is 80 million sea urchins living in barrens in Port Phillip Bay. That is quite an extraordinary number. So well done to everybody who remembered 80 million. Let's go on to question four. So for question four, we have what Australian animals are commonly very iridescent? What Australian animals are very commonly iridescent? Oh, sorry, commonly very iridescent. Now, we did get to see some beautiful pictures of some amazing iridescent animals. And I know one of the questions that we didn't get to, which I really wanted to hear the answer to, I think it might have been Lisa who asked, why don't we see as many Christmas beetles as we used to? Or is that just something that we're imagining? I certainly remember as a kid seeing lots and lots of those amazingly iridescent Christmas beetles and I hardly see them at all anymore. So we'll have to ask Amanda that later. But what do you think? Which Australian animals are commonly very iridescent? Let's think about Mr Sparkles and hopefully you all getting to be predators in Amanda's experiments. So do we think beetles? Do we think snails? Do we think lizards? Oh, I would very much like to see an iridescent lizard. Getting a lot of reactions here too. Bit of laughter here. I wonder if people are laughing about the thought of having iridescent lizards. Who knows? There are some very colourful lizards out there. But your time is up. Let's see how you went. Oh, there you go. We had a very, very clear winner here that pretty much everybody remembered that it is beetles that are commonly very iridescent. So I want to hear from Amanda about Christmas beetles. So I think what gets to happen now, we're halfway through our quiz, I think what gets to happen now is that we get to see a leaderboard and see how everybody is doing. So to remem remember to be, oh no, we're going straight on to question five. I was going to say remember that your chance, it's your chance to win one of 10 prizes. But let's do question five. So how much of the world's bacteriological or pharmaceutical grade agar comes from wild harvested seaweeds? And maybe a follow-up question could be, how much would, uh, would Luke like to see coming from wild harvested seaweeds? So think back to Luke, think back to all the amazing information he gave us about agar, just how important pharmaceutical grade agar is in our uh, modern medical system. And we want to know how much of it comes from wild harvested seaweeds. One of the things I wanted to ask Luke was just how many species we have in Port Phillip Bay that can provide us with pharmaceutical grade seaweed, uh, with pharmaceutical grade agar. I'll have to ask Luke that a bit later on. So let's see. What do you reckon? How much? Is it none? Is it around half? Or is it all? We're getting lots of reactions again. I'm very impressed by how many of you are taking part in tonight's quiz. And it looks to me like a lot of people are getting the correct answers. So that means that the quicker you are in your responses, the more likely you are to win one of our wonderful prizes. So we are nearly out of time for question five. Let's see. Okay, 
we have quite a few people thinking that it's around half, but lots of you remembering that it's all. And so I guess that's what Luke was, Luke was talking to us about, about the fact that it is quite a limited resource. So let's move on to question six. And question six is, what type of nest does the Australian Bird of the Year build? Now, I don't think I better give it away in case uh, some of you have forgotten which is or which was voted the Australian Bird of the Year. Uh, competition run by The Guardian. I was very disappointed that my chosen bird didn't win. I was on Team Gang Gang, otherwise known as the Gang Gang Gang. Uh, I love Gang Gangs. Uh, they've been wonderful company during lockdown out on morning walks uh, with, with the dog and the family. But sadly, gang gangs did not uh, win. So we need to know which, uh, which species of bird. Oh, look, you've got the picture. I couldn't see the picture. I didn't know that you had the picture. So we need to know with our gorgeous fairy wrens here, do they build which type of nest? Is it a cup nest, an enclosed nest, or in fact a cup nest inside a cavity? Time is up. Oh, Ileana, look at how the vote is split. So the correct answer was an enclosed nest close to the ground. There you go. We all need to spend some more time looking for wrens and seeing what sort of beautiful nests they make. Okay, it is time for question seven. We are nearly at the end of the quiz. Question seven is, at what time of the year does the Tamawallaby pouch young permanently leave the pouch and become a young at foot? That's what we call a little marsupial. If it's a macropod, so if it's a kangaroo or a wallaby, leaves the pouch and becomes a young at foot, stays pretty close to mum for a while. And I'm sure you've all seen gorgeous footage of a young joey hopping in and out of the pouch and they get so big that they end up having legs and a tail sticking out. Uh, if it's a different type of marsupial, a possum, then they become a young on the back. But can we remember at what time of year does a tamawallaby pouch young permanently leave the pouch? So none of this hopping in and out business, but actually staying out. And of course, Jane told us that this has, this has important uh, consequences. The time of year is important when it comes to pausing the pregnancy. So do we think that it is summer or autumn or is it spring when this pouch young leaves the pouch from our Tamawallaby, our gold medal winners when it comes to pausing pregnancy? Let's see what you think. Summer, autumn, spring. I'm guessing Jane decided that none of us would guess uh, winter for this one. Let's see what you thought. Time is up. So spring, look at that. I think we have a lot of people doing very, very well in this quiz. So let's have a look at question eight. Now I need to let you know that in fact, uh, question eight does not come from any of our pitches this evening. Question eight is a really good question for Tim Winton fans. So I'm sure we have some Tim Winton fans here. Let's think he is a he really is a living national treasure. So have you read his novel Blueback, which I reckon was probably one of the first ones of his I've read? And which native Australian animal is the title character? So blue is obviously a pretty good clue here, but we do have a few blue animals here in Australia. So either you've read the book and you know, or maybe you have a sense of, of uh, the sort of characters and the sort of settings that Tim Winton tends to write about that might help. I'm sure some of you will have seen this animal at some point as well. So let's see how everybody goes. Which is the title character for Tim Winton's Blueback? 
Is it a blue tongue lizard? Is it a blue swimmer crab? Or is it a blue groper? Let's see what you think. And I'm sure that many of you will have read this book. I must admit, I don't think it's in my pile of books that I have here, although I'm sure we own the book. It must be somewhere in my house. I just didn't find it when I went around the bookshelves collecting up Tim Winton books. Let's see what you think. Blue tongue lizard, blue swimmer crab, or blue groper. Time is nearly up. Oh, we've got a divided field here. Blue groper is correct. So an amazing big fish that Tim Winton tells stories about. But I reckon if you haven't read the book, that's a fair guess to say a blue tongue lizard or a blue swimmer crab. So well done to everybody for taking part in our quiz this evening. Now let's see if we are able to see a leaderboard. I'm really excited to see who the winners of our quiz are. Here we go. So we have in first place with 574 points, we have Rachel. Nice work, Rachel. And then we have Fiona G. We have some killer bees. There you go. We have Claire. We have Yala. We have Jin Khan. We have Holly. We have Wolfblade. We have Steph and we have Andy. So congratulations, obviously, to all of you for taking part in the quiz. And you can see where you scored in our quiz. But if you were one of those top 10 names, congratulations because that means that you have won a one of our prize packs. So that means that you get a, a Tim Winton book, a signed Tim Winton book. And not only do you get that, but you also get a keep cup from the Faculty of Science. So if you are one of the winners, please contact the big science pitch on science-alumni at unimelb.edu.au to claim your prize. And I'm thinking that that is also going to be uh, put into the chat for you. So congratulations if you are one of our first 10 prize winners. Great job. Now I'm waiting to find out if our judges have managed to make their decision or not. Because, of course, while we've been having fun with the trivia, uh, our judges have been very busy discussing uh, and trying to agree on the most outstanding pitch that we've heard tonight. And I've just been told that they have made their decision. Excellent. So it's my great pleasure to hand over to our Dean of Science, Professor Moira O'Brien, to announce the winners. Hello, Moira. Was it was it tense there in the judges' room? It, it was hotly contested. <laughs> and, you know, all, all the projects, all the pitches were excellent. The presentations were all they? outstanding. But they were so diverse. So, you know, that they're all winners. Um, we we threw around a lot of information and we finally came to a decision. So well there done. Are, <laughs> there are one hundred and ten thousand dollars to be awarded. Um, actually, it's one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars to be awarded, as it turns out. So tonight's prizes were made possible thanks to the generous donations to the Native Australian Animals Trust and through the Robert Johansson and Anna Swan Fund. As I said, the panel conferred. It was a very difficult dis discussion. And uh, as I said, every project was excellent. And they are all great examples of what happens when you have curious, brilliant people looking at our, our wildlife. In making the decision, we looked at a combination of innovation, the possible impact of the work, and the general quality and flair of the pitch. So our third prize winner for tonight, uh, who wins $15,000, goes to Luke Barrett. Well done, Luke. <laughs> Actually, we couldn't split first and second. Uh, we went backwards and forwards and we compared and we contrasted and we did all sorts of things. But in the end, we actually couldn't split uh, the first and second prizes. As such, we have two joint winners and they are 
Ileana Mendina and Amanda Franklin. Well done. <laughs> uh, so as I said, um, the, everyone's a winner. The other three pitches in no particular order because they were all truly excellent were Fletcher, Warren Myers, Perrin, Stott, Ross and Jane Fenelon. All will receive funding of $10,000 each from the Native Australian Animals Trust towards getting their project started. I look forward to hearing what happens with all of them. Congratulations to everyone this evening. I also want to thank you all of you for the prize, all of the prize panels uh, for John, that's John McKenzie, Julie Douglas, Tuni Marto and Liam Mannix for their deliberations and making their time available. It's a pleasure I, and I hope to see you all in person soon. Jen, I will now hand back to you to introduce the Tim Winton Choice Award video. Thank you, Moira, and congratulations to our winners. It's just so exciting. Now, you'll be pleased to hear that although Tim obviously can't be live with us tonight, we did give him a sneak peek of the pictures and he has sent through a video announcing the winner of the Tim Winton's Choice Award. So please take it away, Tim. Look, uh, all of these projects are worthy. Um, if it was up to me, I, I would make sure all of them were supported um, and I hope they all will be. And, and I wish uh, all of these young scientists uh, every success um, in seeing them through. And, and, and I'm very hopeful about their outcomes. Um, I guess because of my background, um, I was a little more susceptible to uh, uh, Fletcher Warren Myers urchin project um, because it doesn't just uh, had the possibility of extending our knowledge about certain species. It also has the potential to help restore uh, a blighted ecosystem um, and to set things right. And so uh, Fletcher Warren Myers Urchin Project um, gets my unqualified vote. Congratulations, Fletcher. How good is that going to look on the CV? The Tim Winton Choice Award. So our final award for this evening, it's my great pleasure to announce the winner of the People's Choice Award as voted by you. So we had many, many hundreds of votes. Thank you to everybody who voted. And I'm very pleased to let you know that the People's Choice winner this evening is Ileana. Woohoo! Congratulations, Ileana. So on top of all the other uh, prizes this evening, you've been awarded an additional $10,000 for your research on bird nests. So that brings us to the end of our main proceedings for this evening. Thank you for sticking around. We just had a lot of questions, a lot of excitement. We know you stuck around past the time that we suggested you would, but I'm sure you will agree with me that it was worth it. What wonderful science we've heard. So I would like to thank everybody involved, obviously our patron and very special guest, Tim Winton, our wonderful host, Professor Moira O'Brien, all of our incredible judges who had very difficult decisions to make, our wonderful scientists, of course, our six scientists who did such an incredible job pitching their research, and we wish them all the best for their projects. I'd like to also thank Professor Tim Dempster in the School of Biosciences, whose brainchild tonight's event is, and all of the Faculty of Science events and advancement teams who've worked so hard to bring it together. And of course, the team at JT Production Management who are so busy behind the scenes, making sure that tonight has run as smoothly as it has. And of course, thank you to all of you, our audience for joining us tonight, for voting, for taking part in trivia, and for making my job so easy because you gave me so many wonderful questions to ask. And finally, I would like to thank all of our generous supporters who made tonight possible. So if you enjoyed this evening, we'd love you to consider supporting our Native Australian Animals Trust so that next year we can have an even bigger event 
and support more of our incredible young researchers. So please join me in congratulating our wonderful scientists. I'm so thrilled that they are all going to have support for their research. Thank you so much for joining us and wishing you a very good night. Thank you.